Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Monday. Time for a brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. This week we're talking about the 7 Things. I have no idea how I'm going to talk about 7 Things in 5 days. But the 7 Things you need to focus on for a happy, healthy, balanced life. Right here on 7 Minutes. Stay tuned. You know, every once in a while I feel like I put myself, I dig myself a hole. And this week might be one of those weeks. Uh, actually, I was just sitting here right before I got started. Should I try to do all seven this week or should I do four this week and some next week? Or I, I don't know. We'll kind of see where it goes. But um, I think this will be really good stuff for you, especially if you haven't heard this in a little while. This is not particularly new, but not something I go over. Uh, like this very often so good stuff uh, it is stuff that I use um, in a couple of workshops that I do and specifically with, with coaching clients but definitely something that will be of benefit to you so if uh, if you have ever felt overwhelmed if you felt like uh, life is happening to you instead of you controlling your life man this it's right here this is the stuff for you so do me a favor before we get started, if you're watching live or on the replay, either way, I'd like it if you'd drop me a comment down there. Let me know that you are here, that you are watching. That's always cool to know who is here. And if you have any questions as we go, by all means, drop those down in the comments. Also, those make me happy because then I get to answer your questions. That's how I know that I'm giving you the very best content the very best benefit so good morning to joe and ramona you guys are awesome thank you both for being here all right so we're going to start with number one of the seven today we'll see how this goes but uh the seven things what did i call this the seven seven things you have to focus on for a happy healthy balanced life because that's really the goal right happy healthy and balanced if you don't have those things then what do you have? And here, let me, before I even get into number one, I want to dispel one of the, the myths or clarify something that I say all the time. It's very common for people to say they're looking, oh, I need, I need to work on my work-life balance. And things are so out of whack. Work-life balance is BS. It is. It's BS. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been at work and thought about something that was going on at home? Have you ever been at home and thought about something that was going on at work? Maybe you were on vacation and wondered whether you left the garage door open or not. See, work is just part of life. Vacation is part of life. Exercise is part of life. It's just life. That's the first reason that I think it's BS. The other is because it presumes to say that we need work-life balance presumes they are two distinct things, which we've already established they are not and that they are on opposite sides of a teeter-totter. And so we have to find some way to get balance with those. But instead, if they're one thing, how do you balance one thing? Well, I guess you could try and balance a ball on top of a pen or something like that. Which actually kind of leads to my example, or what I like to do with these seven. These are the seven aspects of your life you have to have in balance. I like to think of them like a plate. Have you ever seen those guys that... They like spin a plate on top of a stick. You know, if they got a stick up here and they're spinning a plate. I looked one time to get a plate to use for that example and tried it. Vicky doesn't let me try that anymore. So spinning a plate on top of a stick, that's kind of what we're after, right? If one side or one aspect gets a little too heavy, it starts to wobble. So we want to keep that thing in balance. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so today, the first one. Maybe, maybe the most important one, although all these are pretty important. This is the one where, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard the saying, ah, it doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time? I'd rather pay somebody money than give them my time. Because time and time is the first thing we have to find out how to balance. Time is that one non-renewable resource that we are all issued. We get 
a stack. I actually have this stack right here, a stack of poker chips. You might even hear me doing that every once in a while while we're sitting here talking. It's a stack of poker chips because this is all you get. That's it. If I had one for every, maybe this is one for every decade because I'm pretty sure this is eight of them. Yeah. So there's eight of them here. Maybe I get one for every decade. That's worth 10 years, right? Every time I spend 10 years working on something, i got to give up one of those. And I can't get any more. Can't buy in again. Once they're all gone, they're gone. So why? Why would you give somebody... Why would you give... Why would you give your most valuable resource away? Right? That's That's what I'm challenged with a lot. And even... I mean... I get it that things like TV are, are interesting and they are mental escapes and they're relaxation and whatnot. But, and I tell people all the time, we don't really watch TV. We do watch TV. We watched the show last night. We watched the ball game on Saturday. But out of the whole weekend, literally out of the whole weekend, we watched two things on TV. We watched the ball game on Saturday and watched one episode of the show that we're binging right now. And we binge them so that we can do them on our time. We're not have to, oh, it's Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We've got to, no. <clears throat> we watch them when it works for us. We have taken back control, at least <laughs> <coughs> in so much as it relates to TV, taken back control of our time. Now, let me be really clear on this, too. This is an ongoing effort, right? There are constantly things trying to Steal your time. TV's just my favorite one because I've, for years and years, I, even when the kids were little, we called it the idiot box. And uh, now I just call it bubble gum for your brain. Something you sit there and chew on and chew on and chew on and it has no nutritional value whatsoever. There's no good news on anymore. So, it, it's, ah, it's just there. Now, there are things that it helps with, just like reading like out of the bookcase over here, right? Not all of those books are business books. There's some fiction in there. And because that lights up different parts of our brain. And we need that at different times. So there's beneficial. The ball game was something live. The, the show we're binging is, is fiction. So you need that. You need, but it needs to be in balance. Do you know the average American watches over seven hours of TV a day? Seven hours. I don't even know where you can get seven hours. Where, where, I, honestly, I, if you watch more than, than two or three hours, please tell me where you find them, because I don't even know, I don't even know where those hours would come from. It's just, I don't get that. Alright, so enough about TV. Time is the topic today. Be sure and manage your time. So here's what I want you to do today. Before you get up from where you are watching this episode, I want you to make an estimate. Just get out, even if it's like a little sticky pad, if it's a, more of a notepad, or the back of your hand and a pen, right? I want you to write down the four or five categories where you think you spend the most time during the day. And that's in 24 hours, right? So right off the top, you know you get eight hours of sleep, right? <laughs> yeah, eight, eight hours, eight hours. So you sleep a good portion of the day, right? But big categories. So uh, for you, it might be answering email, taking phone calls, new product development, um, whatever the case might be. Write down the big categories, and I want you to, to estimate how many hours a day you spend in each one of those categories. You have to do this before you get up. doesn't work if you do it later on. Do it right now. Estimate how much you, how much time you spend in each one of those categories, and then for the rest of the day, in the same little pad, keep up with it. Just little tick marks. That's all. I guarantee you, 100% money back guaranteed. Your estimate will be wrong. Always, it's always wrong because we estimate what we want to do, not what we actually do. So go through that exercise. If I'm wrong, I want you to be back here tomorrow to tell me. And I'll, I will happily accept responsibility for being wrong. But I don't think I'm going to be. 
So, but, but, and here's why I want you to do this. Understanding what's going on is the first, is the key to change. It's the first thing you have to do to change it. You got to understand where that time is going, where it's being spent before you can make any changes to how you do that. Time is the first of seven elements that we have to have for a happy, healthy, balanced life. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. I'm going to talk about number two, which is equally challenging. I think time was easy or well, difficult, rather. Tomorrow's going to be tougher than that. So tune in tomorrow to find out what that is. I will be back with another brand new installment. Seven minutes in the morning right here at seven o'clock tomorrow. I will talk to you then. You guys have a magnificent Monday.